the end of our, you know, of our meeting, um, you know, if the time allows, he will give us some admission updates. Um, but we are so excited for y'all to be joining us. Welcome, um, you know, to our very first of eight presentations this semester, um, you know, by the programs and the centers within the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement at UT Austin. Um, so the purpose of today's presentation is for students, you know, to um, discover all of the amazing resources that are available on campus, as well as virtually, right? Because right now, uh, during this pandemic, um, you know, everything is going to be virtual. Uh, so we just want to share, you know, everything with you all, those amazing resources that are here at UT Austin. Um, so really brief, um, our, today's agenda for the Discovering UT's Diversity and Community Engagement. Um, just a brief welcome um, and our interjection of our amazing speaker. And then of course our presentation, um, Gender and Sexuality Center by KB Brookins. Um, KB is already here. Um, and then of course our closing and our admissions update with Rudy Moya. Um, just briefly, some housekeeping rules, um, uh, you know, turn off your camera, uh, keep yourself on mute if possible, um, use proper etiquette in the chat, um, and this session is being recorded. Um, so um, if you all do have any questions at any point, um, just feel free to, you know, include it in our chat. Our Youth Engagement Center counselors are available to answer any questions, as well as our admissions. Uh, Rudy is available if you have questions about admissions, he's going to be um, able to assist you. And so our speaker today, uh, KB Brookins, a uh, program coordinator at the Gender and Sexuality Center. Um, we're so happy to have you here. We're so excited to hear more about the center and the amazing services and resources y'all uh, provide the students. Great, am I good to go now? Okay, great. Um, hey y'all, I'm KB. Um, my pronouns are they and them, and I'm really excited to tell y'all a little bit about the Gender and Sexuality Center. Um, if I can go ahead and start sharing my screen, I can start my presentation. Um, if you all have any questions as I go through some of these things, like this is your session, and I'm sure that somebody else in the room has the exact same question, so please feel, you know, empowered to ask. Um, but as I said, uh, I work at the Gender and Sexuality Center, and I think it's pretty cool, so I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, but before I go into my whole spiel, I really think this two minute video that we have pretty well encompasses all the things of what we do. Um, my presentation is going to be um, talking a little bit specifically about uh, some of our services. Hey, the Gender and Sexuality Center, or the GSC for short, is UT's Women and LGBTQIA Plus Center. We've been serving students for 15 years through programming, workshops, and hosting a space where students can find community and be themselves. The GSC offers us so many great resources, like the GSC Food Bank, student groups where I can meet new people, and a cool spot where I got a new outfit for a job interview and got the job. After years of students advocating for a space where they could be themselves, the Gender and Sexuality Center opened its doors in 2005, and it happens to be in a converted closet in the Student Services Building. Four locations later, we're out of the closet and into our current location, where we have a food bank, library, microwave, and a general space where students never need a reason to walk in the door. We serve about 100 students a day, support at least 30 student orgs, give around 100 workshops, and have around 1,000 people at our events each semester, offer a robust student internship program, and maintain a thriving education program. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Quinn Ho Min. I'm the Assistant Director for the Gender and Sexuality Center. I use she and they pronouns, and I oversee the education program. And if you're wondering what that entails, I am happy to uh, answer that question for you. So if you go on our main page and you hover over this training workshop, um, 
or on our website, you will notice that there's a number of different drop down options. One of the options is our trainings and workshops. And there's a list of what those workshops are. And then usually it's a cover um, intersectionality, queer, and feminist topics. And you can learn more about how to attend them as well as request them. Another thing that I also want to highlight too is our peers prepared for. So I teach this class. It is a year-long commitment um, for our students to do participate. And um, you take a class in this fall and where you learn a lot about academics, and then you take the class in the spring where you learn more about facilitation and how to facilitate dialogue and workshops across campus. All in all, the GSC is a place where you can advocate, educate, create space, or just have fun and meet new people. Come by and say hi during your time at UT. We'll always be available to you. To learn more about the GSC, visit utgsc.org or shoot us an email at gsc at austin.utexas.edu and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Cool, cool. I hope that has us all fired up um, about the GSC. Um, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna chat now a little bit more about um, who we are, right? Um, I say GSC, it stands for Gender and Sexuality Center. Most people on campus refer to us in that way. Um, and the GSC is UT's Women's Center and LGBTQIA plus center. So think of us as a two-in-one package. Um, and we provide opportunities for all of UT Austin's community to explore, organize, and promote learning around gender and sexuality. Um, we also respond to the needs of women and LGBTQIA plus people specifically on campus, as we are the center for both of those uh, demographics through education, outreach, and advocacy. Um, so usually uh, at this point in the PowerPoint, people are like, well, what does that mean, right? I understand that that's wordy, so I will say it in, in simpler terms. We just provide services. We're a student services center um, and we do a lot of different things to support uh, students on campus. Um, some of the things that we provide, programs. So we have weekly events every single week in the fall and the spring. We have a different event that folks can attend. We have larger scale events like a graduation that we do every year for graduating seniors um, that are LGBTQIA plus or allies. You saw some clips of that in the video, hopefully. Um, we have a mentor program so students can get uh, partnered with either other students or faculty and staff to, you know, get them acclimated to life at UT. Um, and we have a student organization affiliate program, which I'll talk a little bit more about um, as I talk to talk through uh, each of these services. We have outreach, trainings and workshops, uh, library. Um, we assist students with what's called a preferred name process. If a student doesn't go by um, a name that's like their legal name and they want to go by something like KB, right? It's a way for us to do that, right? You can change it in the UT directory on your um, UT ID card, all of that. Um, and we assist students with that. Um, we have a four credit academic class. We have advising, so on and so forth. Um, so now I'll talk a little bit about our history as a center. Um, so like the Multicultural Engagement Center, which is another center at UT, they're actually our sister center, um, we are founded by student organizing. So that means um, essentially that students, you know, advocated for the space, activists back in 2004 were like, we really need a space on campus um, for women and LGBTQIA plus students um, to be celebrated. Um, for other folks to learn about gender and sexuality and a hub, you know, for student activists, um, different student organizations, a place for us to meet each other. So uh, UT responded by making a gender and sexuality center. Yay, I'm employed because of those students. Um, we opened our doors first in August 2005. As the video said, our first center was like literally in a closet. So yay um, for humble beginnings, but now we're in the Student Activity Center or WCP and we've been there since 2011. Um, now I'm gonna go into a little bit about each of our services that I you know, had listed out. So first is virtual advising, one of my favorites. Um, at any point um, during your time at UT, you could talk to a professional staff member, by professional we mean like nine to five full-time staff member um, about really anything under, under the sun as it pertains to LGBTQA plus women's or folks trying to be allies and things like that. Um, 
to those communities. Um, we've spoken with students, faculty, and staff of any identity through our virtual advising. Here are just some topics that we've seen before in those sessions, like sexism. Um, I don't know, my friend said something sexist, and I'm not really sure how to respond to, respond to it, right? Um, we're happy to help in those instances. Um, relationships, I'm having this really weird familiar relationship, um, or I don't know, uh, faculty and me relationship, and I really don't feel empowered to say something about it, right? We can help with those kinds of situations. Navigating housing, especially for folks in the LGBTQIA plus community, we know safety is a uh, imperative. So we're happy to speak through that. And then of course, coming out, we see that in multiple different ways. Like I wanna tell my professor my, my uh, pronouns. I wanna, you know, come out to my family, so on and so forth. You know, we have the resources and we wanna make ourselves available. Literally all folks have to do is make a calendar appointment with us. Um, another one of our services is the AnesisNet Library. So AnesisNet, our namesake for our library, was a celebrated uh, activist and author. And one thing that she really believed in was access for everyone. And she did a lot of activism in Austin in the early 2000s around internet access and how internet should be a utility, not a luxury. Right. So we try to embody that through our library by making it a resource library for everyone, meaning it's open to students, faculty, staff and community members and it's donation based, meaning we don't assess late fees and things like that. So, yeah, you don't even have to have an EID to get something from our library. Um, and every year we have an annual library day to celebrate on net and to also fundraise for our library at any point. Um, if someone looks through our library, you know, uh, list and is like, it'd be really cool if y'all had this book, they can put it on a wish list. And every year we try our best to get every single book that's on that wish list off of it. Um, and uh, due to the pandemic, we went curbside. So um, fortunately we can't be like we were in that video super close to each other, but that doesn't mean our library isn't still open to folks. Um, you can pick out your new favorite book, um, pick it up, et cetera, um, from the WCP, just using this link here. Um, yeah. So I don't know, love our library. Um, other services that we have, weekly events. I, I try to say uh, very, uh, in a corny way, every day is a party at the GSC because we have an event for almost every day of the week, I think. Um, so first on Mondays, every Monday from 12 to 1.30 p.m., we have a women of color discussion group or a discussion group for anyone that identifies as a woman of color um, on UT's campus, really awesome space to meet people, also talk shop, you know, about things um, that, that feel familiar around specifically being a woman of color at UT open to all students. Um, every Thursday, we have Trans Thursdays, which is another kind of like social group, want to meet folks. Um, though it says trans, it means literally not cis to us. So we're intersex inclusive, we're non-binary inclusive, et cetera. Um, yeah, and it's uh, facilitated usually by a GSC like student staff member. They just kind of like hang out, meet each other, talk about whatever under the sun. Um, and similarly to Feminist Friday. I will say out of these three events, Feminist Friday is the one with the most structure, quote unquote, meaning like every uh, Friday, they have a different kind of topic that they talk about. Um, and that space is, you know, for anyone looking to learn more about feminism, hang out with other folks um, that maybe uh, are interested in feminism, right? Um, that's also usually, um, what do you call it, facilitated by a GSC uh, student staff member. This semester's Ashley, who's awesome. Um, and she just comes in with a different topic every week. That's like, hey, today we're gonna talk about uh, feminism in media, or today we're gonna talk about international feminism or uh, digital feminism, uh, some topics that they've talked about before, tone policing. Um, hey, today we have a special speaker. So it's more like a, a new adventure every week. Um, and students, you know, get to have a say so and like what those events look like. Um, but yeah, really awesome ways to connect through our center literally every single week. Um, those are just the flyers for some of our things that we have going on this semester. Um, and uh, next is our special events. Or I think in the first slide I said like non-weekly events, like things that don't happen every week, but you can't count on them happening at least once a semester, once a year. Uh, one that is literally uh, uh, taking over my life this week and next is the gender inclusive clothing and stuff swap. I would say by far, this is like our biggest event that we have every semester because 
because get this, it's free clothes and stuff, literally. Um, and we call it gender inclusive because we don't differentiate clothes by gender. We're just like, hey, this is shirts, this is pants, whatever. Anyone of any gender can wear whatever clothes that they want. Um, and we call it clothing and stuff because it's donation based as well, meaning like um, sometimes we get lots of clothes donated and sometimes it's books. One year we got a microwave. Um, another year we got like a whole bunch of ski gear. Like, I don't know. People donate things and we're just like, cool. Well, now we're gonna redistribute them to our population and it's always a really good time. Um, our closet is open right now. If you wanna check it out, we have posted about it on our social medias at least once uh, this week. Um, another special event is Lavender Graduation. So that's a UT wide graduation for LGBTQIA plus and ally uh, students. We like to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduating seniors. They work so hard to become UT alum, right? Um, so it's a whole like a uh, shebang every year. It's a DJ performances, speeches, um, reading of names, little cute rainbow stoles. I don't know, it's a nice uh, event. Um, so. If you're within community or an ally to community, definitely look out for that um, in your senior year. We've been doing it for the last 14 years and plan to do it for 14 plus more years. Um, and last one, I think on here that I'll talk about is Queer Voices. Um, so this is a monthly workshop series and discussion group that we have, um, really similar to our Women of Color discussion group, but as you can maybe tell by the name, it's more geared towards like LGBTQIA plus um, identifying students. Um, it's a student group that has a different kind of special topic every month. And it's facilitated by uh, Joey Hanna, which is this awesome guy um, that works in the Counseling and Mental Health Center. Um, it's not a mental health group by any means, um, but he does kind of have like a special topics that he goes off of, has special guests sometimes. Um, a recent one that they just did was like love and romance in the age of COVID. So it literally could be anything under the sun. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit on our special events. Um, another service I'd love to speak with you about is our education program. So um, once you get on campus, right, you'll probably see this, this card everywhere. Um, because our faculty and staff like love to put that outside of their offices, which I think is really cute. Um, if they have this card, it means that they've taken our allyship toolkit part one and two. Um, and the GSC offers so many uh, different trainings and workshops to students, faculty, and staff. Um, some of my favorites are intersectionality and allyship. So if you want to learn more about um, LGBTQIA plus identities and then go the extra mile of like also learning about race, um, disability status and how all of those things inform the way that people live and how other people interact with them. I think it's a really awesome session. Another one I've taken that I've really liked is by and beyond. So talking about fluid sexuality identities, maybe not ones that uh, are so uh, binary sexuality, right? Um, feels like at, at this point in society, lots of folks know about like gay, lesbian, not always bisexual, pansexual, et cetera. So this is a session all about like learning um, about those uh, identities and experiences. So uh, you're actually at Intro to the Gender and Sexuality Center now. So yay for you. Um, but at any point, anyone can request a training and workshop. All you have to do is go to our website. Um, continuing on our education program, because it's so robust, we also have a four credit academic class called Peers for Pride. Um, I really like this class. Um, it's a class with no prerequisites and it counts in social work, women's and gender studies, and theater and dance. So literally, if you need a credit in any of those three, consider taking Peers for Pride. Um, it's all about answering this question here. What do thriving queer communities look like? In the uh, first session, kind of what Glenn Hung was saying, in the uh, video um, or in the first semester, you learn a lot about uh, academic language down to the like, what does the LGBTQIA plus acronym stand for? And to like, what are queer experiences on campus? Learning all of that knowledge, soaking it in. And then in the next semester, you get to like make these plays and stuff. It's real cute. I like it a lot. Um, and you also learn to navigate complex conversations around gender and sexuality. So it's awesome class. Um, be on the lookout for uh, fall recruitment. Um, we're actually recruiting for the fall right now. So if you wanna look into that, um, I definitely would suggest it. Lots of students walk away from that class feeling like, oh, okay, now I don't feel so nervous when like someone says something that could be potentially problematic around me, I know how to respond now, which is great. I think that's a skill that anyone needs in any you know major. Um, and second to last thing I'll talk to y'all about today is the student group affiliate program. 
my bad. Um, so we have uh, partnerships with different student groups around campus. Um, and as part of this program, groups uh, get an advisor from our center, dibs on our center and conference room space. They could just like uh, rent it out whenever they want to if they're part of our affiliate program. Um, and these are also the student groups that we prioritize promoting in our newsletter, bulletin, calendar, website, stuff like that. Um, if you're looking to get acclimated to UT, I definitely would check out our student group affiliates. We have identity-based ones, activity-based ones, and major specific ones. Some examples I put here is uh, Silk Club, really awesome student group that we work with. And they're all about uh, Asian American women, um, non-binary folks in films, and they do zines and like performance shows, really awesome group of, of students. Uh, we have Strings and Things. They're all about knitting and crocheting and stuff, which I feel like is really peaceful in this time, um, but really awesome group of students once again. Um, and then we also have gender minorities in physics and they're all about empowering women, non-binary folks, trans men, exceptionally great, exceptionally um, looking into uh, physics majors. Um, so I don't know, lots of different you know avenues. We have engineering groups, medical groups, business groups, and also groups that are just all about like uh, hanging out, getting connected. Um, and we also like to talk about resource Thursdays, which who knows if that's gonna be a thing by the time we get to UT, but um, we have it for fall and spring right now and had it uh, last year as well. Um, contactless curbside, um, we have free items, you know, that folks can just uh, come and pick up from us. Tams, tampons, pads, condoms, dental dance, max, and hand sanitizer. And the masks are like really cute and have, I don't think I have one on me, dang, um, have like a Pierce or Pride logo on them. So. Look out for that if you'd like to. Um, last thing I'll talk to you about is a GSC crisis fund. So we have a crisis fund available to women and LGBTQIA plus students in need. If you ever find yourself in crisis or you or anyone that you know, definitely email us and see about you know applying to that. But yeah, that's all I got. Um, does anyone have any questions, comments, queries? I'm happy to answer anything. You can go ahead and utilize your questions either by unmuting yourself, guys, or if you want to state your questions in the chat, that's perfectly fine, too. Lots of great and awesome information. I saw some of like the groups we had like trans um, Thursday, I think. Um, are those like close to just like transgender individuals or are they also a place for like cisgendered people to learn and to like become a better ally? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, we reserve Trans Thursdays mostly for non cisgender students to kind of meet each other. Um, but if folks are looking to, you know, become better allies, I definitely would suggest our trainings and workshops. We even have one, which I didn't talk about, but um, we have one here on our list of trainings and workshops specifically for um, supporting trans communities, right? They're really interactive, robust workshops. Um, students, faculty, and staff are open to request one. We've even done some with student groups specifically. So yeah, yeah, we definitely have opportunities for um, allies to engage. Thank you for asking. You said there was something that Taking applications for the fall semester. I'm sorry, I forgot the name. How do we go about applying for it? Thank you. Thank you for asking that in the chat. So Pierce for Pride right now, our academic class um, is taking applications. And by applications are really like mean, like, hey, uh, indicate interest and we'll talk to you. You know, it's not like a betting process where it'll be you versus them. Like, it's not, it's not like that, I promise. Um, but we're taking applications right now for our class. So if you want to, Yes, this call will be recorded to my understanding. Um, if you want to check that out, I will go to utgsc.org. I'll also put that in the chat. Um, and yeah, sign up if you'd like to. Thank you for asking. Any other questions, comments, y'all? This is your chance, guys. You got somebody from campus here. This doesn't happen. 
very often for us down here. So um, we're really excited for this opportunity. So please, if you have a thought, if you have a question, um, curious about anything, you know, just, you know, this is the time. Take advantage. This, this session is for you guys. Questions, KB. Do you mind um, putting your, if you don't mind, um, maybe some contact? Well, there you beat me to it. <laughs> there, there. You got some questions. Here we go. Ooh, um, how are there any internships specifically? Yes, absolutely. Um, so because you know we've gotten the privilege of being so well connected with also the like Austin LGBTQA plus community. We do, you know, come across opportunities and post those in our newsletters. And also, you know, if folks are, are uh, connected with us already to some capacity, like you will hear about it. Um, also, the GSC, just personally, we take on interns and staff members every fall and spring and sometimes in the summer, too. We actually did have two uh, summer interns that we just onboarded. Um, so definitely look into our opportunities. When we are hiring, we also post on our social media and on our newsletters and things like that. Um, but some uh, local queer communities that I would say to get plugged into for our opportunities, um, Algo. Algo is really great um, and therefore uh, queer people of color. Um, and also uh, Quell. Quell is a, a community foundation here locally. Um, yeah, there are so many different, different avenues of uh, engagement. For sure. Um, how is the engineering section for GSC? Um, we are so well connected with engineering folks. It seems like they uh, they they really love us, which I love. Um, it's two student groups that I would actually suggest getting connected with if you can. Um, o STEM is like out in STEM. Um, they're a really good bunch of uh, students there. Um, what is it? Q plus plus. They're queer students in computer science. They're really awesome as well. Um, and then engineering LGBT cuties. They're also a student group that's like in the engineering space specifically. Um, and they're all a part of our student group uh, affiliate program. Um, so I'll drop the link actually for them there. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's pretty common. Um, but yeah, get, get involved with those student groups, you know, if you can, I definitely would suggest it. Um, yes, yes, we have an IG, um, it's GSC at UT, but I will, I will pop the link in the chat. Thank you for asking. Um, and there are any student groups for government? Absolutely, they are. OMG, let me tell you about them. Um, we have the Queer and Trans Student Alliance, and they're um, out in the, what you call it, UT student government. They're awesome. Um, we have the Women's Resource Agency. Women's. It's at the very bottom, I know it is. There it goes. <laughs> They're also a part of the UT student government. Um, we have the Career Graduate Student Association, which to my understanding, all are undergrads, but they're really awesome. Uh, have mentorship opportunities with them as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Student government is definitely robust, I would say, at UT. Any other questions, y'all? And I don't want to take up too much time, so if I'm over my time, my bad. Um, you can always email me. I put my email in the chat. Um, you know, I answer that pretty frequently. Um, yeah, and I'm so happy that y'all are, you know, considering coming to UT. It's awesome. Thank you so much, KB. Um, if y'all do have any questions, um, you know, KB did leave uh, the email in the chat so you can reach out to them uh, there. Um, for now, um, thank you so much, KB. So much amazing information and resources. Um, I think it's really good for students to know that, you know, these services are available to them. Um, so it's very exciting to learn so much amazing information. Uh, thank you again for being here. Um, so for now, if there are any more questions, um, we're going to go ahead and pro proceed with our admissions. Um, we have Rudy Moya with some admission updates. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us today, and congratulations on being admitted to the university. Uh, Rudy Wai, one of the admissions counselors here, specifically working out of our Valley Admissions Center. Uh, and we're just going to have some quick um, little notes for y'all of where we are um, in this semester and those kinds of things. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, and so the quick thing that y'all see here is this next steps checklist. So first and foremost, the thing that you'll have to complete is accepting your offer. You'll have until May 1st uh, to be able to do so. Um, so make sure that you go in there and accept your offer and satisfy that $200 enrollment deposit. If you qualified for an application fee waiver, uh, then that $200 enrollment deposit will automatically be waived for you, so you actually won't even be prompted for payment. Uh, keep in mind that here at the University of Texas, we are a non-binding school, so even if UT is not 100% sure the place that you want to go to, you can always accept your offer now um, and change your mind at a later date uh, if that so chooses to be the case for you um, and those kinds of things. But accepting your offer um, is kind of like the gatekeeper for all all the rest of the different things uh, to start preparing and getting you ready um, to enroll with us in this upcoming fall. Next thing after that is apply for housing. If you haven't already done so, you still are eligible to apply for housing. It's a quick four-step process on your My Status page. There's a $50 application fee, but again, if you qualify for a fee waiver, then that $50 application fee will also be waived. If you've already applied for housing and you've already accepted your offer and satisfied the enrollment deposit, that is when you become eligible for a housing contract. Housing contracts actually started to get released last week. Um, we'll get released on the the first and the 15th of every month, um, unless that falls on a weekend, then it'll be that first business Monday. They're sent directly to your email address that you have with us on file. Um, once you get offered that housing contract, uh, you have 10 days to be able to sign and return that housing contract um, and then uh, update your building preferences. Uh, you'll get to list your top five building preferences and your roommate preferences as well. Uh, keep in mind with that housing contract, there is a $300 housing advance payment that is due. Again, if you qualify for an application fee waiver, uh, this fee will automatically be deferred to financial aid. Um, this is a deferment and not a waiver, uh, meaning that it will come out of any scholarships uh, or financial aid that you may receive from the university overall. After you've updated those building preferences starting in June is when you'll be able to go and make your housing selection uh, based off the preferences that you chose. Um, and then in mid to late July is when you'll schedule your move-in weekend, which always happens that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, when classes begin. After that, uh, the next thing for you to do in that next steps process uh, is completing your FAFSA and accepting your financial aid awards. If you haven't already done so, I highly encourage you to submit your FAFSA or TASFA to our a university directly um, that we, our Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid can review that information and potentially be able to award you um, any kind of aid that you may qualify for. Uh, keep in mind, though, that if you haven't already submitted that to us, our priority consideration deadline was January 15th, um, so you might not receive the max amount of eligible aid that you could have qualified for. If you have already submitted it to us, our Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid has not yet released uh, those financial aid notifications. We expect those uh, within the next two weeks or so uh, to start getting released. Once they do, uh, you'll receive an email letting you know that there's been a change to your cash page. Cash stands for check aid status here, which you can access via the financial aid tab on your My Status page and see your full award letter. You'll also be able to see what that will look like in regards to your full estimated cost of attendance. So regards to your real tuition number, uh, what that would look like compared to the housing, although that housing price is to the middle 50%, uh, the transportation costs, the miscellaneous expenses, and the books and fees are also estimates just because those are variable costs. Um, it will vary on whether or not you're even bringing a vehicle to campus, what specific courses that you're taking and those kinds of things uh, that will determine the book prices or whether you even need uh, books. Uh, you will also be able to see whether or not you were selected for any of the scholarships that y'all are automatically considered for. Um, simply by applying to the university, you're considered for the majority of the scholarships that we have available. Um, this is where you also will be able to see whether or not you were selected for those scholarships on the scholarship interest form where you had to opt in for those specific scholarships. 
This is true for all scholarships, for the exception of the Terry Foundation. Uh, students have advanced in the Terry Foundation process have already been notified um, as well. Uh, none of the Texas X's awards will appear on your financial aid award letter. 40 Acres has already announced their finalist. All of the endowments, named scholarships, and any local chapter scholarships uh, will get released in mid to late April as well, since their deadline just closed um, on February 15th. Um, on that note, though, y'all should make sure that y'all are applying for any and all outside local scholarships, though, um, and definitely try to uh, get outside as many outside money as you can, because uh, any dollar amount definitely helps with that. After that, the last thing is registering for orientation. A registration for orientation will open up in April. Uh, you'll receive an email notification from New Student Services letting you know when orientation or registration for orientation will begin. Uh, we will hold seven different sessions throughout the summer that will be through June and July for you to be able to attend. There are three-day sessions that are specifically listed by your colleges and schools. Uh, please note that not all colleges and schools have all seven sessions available, but if that is the case, that is perfectly fine, um, and it is by design that your college or school might not have all seven of those sessions available. There is also an August orientation date uh, that is available as well, uh, but you should consider that one as the last resort um, and try to attend one of those main seven sessions. Uh, New Student Services has not yet made the determination on whether or not um, orientation for this upcoming summer will be held virtually or in person. Uh, so stay tuned for that um, and the price for orientation because um, the whether it's gonna be in person or virtual hasn't been decided uh, will also be to be determined at that point in time. Uh, once you do register for orientation, there will be some pre-orientation modules uh, that you'll be able to see on your What's Next tab uh, for you to complete prior to orientation, like submitting your bacterial meningitis vaccination documentation, your measles uh, documentation as well, um, making sure we have your TSI scores or show that you're TSI exempt. Uh, if you've taken any dual or concurrent enrollment hours, making sure that as soon as the spring semester is over, you forward that final transcript over to us directly from the college or university uh, that you currently attend. Uh, that way it can run through our IDA system. Uh, that way when you meet with your academic advisor orientation, you'll know what courses uh, transfer over at that point in time. Keeping along the lines of orientation, there is also family orientation that will occur on day one of each orientation session thrown by Texas parents. Um, last year it was held virtually as well, um, and it was free of charge. They have also not made the determination on whether or not this summer it will be virtual or in person. If it is in person, or even if it is virtual actually rather, um, they will both just be one day sessions and are open to any family members uh, that would like to attend uh, with that. And then the last thing um, is to, if you haven't already done so, start getting in the habit of checking your My Status page in your emails regularly. Um, if you haven't already noticed, we're going to be contacting y'all way more this spring semester than we have in the fall, and it's going to be coming from different departments. Um, so you don't want, to, or you want to make sure that you're not missing any important information, uh, since some of that information is time sensitive, um, so you don't want to miss out on anything like that. Uh, just to kind of give you a timeline of where we are, um, as you can see, the majority of our timeline has already occurred. Um, and so the last big deadline that you'll see is that May 1st, where you have to accept your offer um, and satisfy your enrollment deposit. Um, if you do not accept your offer by May 1st, uh, we do have the option to rescind your offer of admission. Um, and so we don't want that to happen, neither do you. Uh, so make sure that you accept that offer. Like I said, we're a non-binding school. Um, so as long as you cancel by May 1st, that $200 um, is refundable at that point in time. Um, keep in mind that there will be um, some upcoming um, sessions as well, um, and so this is some lecture series uh, slides. There will also be some more um, information sessions through uh, DDCE and the Youth Engagement Center, um, so be on the lookout for those as well. Um, if you have any specific questions in regards to admission, uh, I'll be happy to stick around and answer some of those. Um, but if you have some that come up throughout the rest of this process, uh, please feel free to reach out 
um, to all of our admission centers that you see. So we have our Office of Admissions contact information. We also have our regional admission centers in Dallas, Houston, and in the Rio Grande Valley area. Uh, like I mentioned, that's where I work out of, and we oversee uh, the Laredo, Coastal Bend, um, and Rio Grande Valley. Uh, so truly all of South Texas. Um, so feel free to reach out and ask any questions that you might have. Uh, you can also follow us on our different social media channels if you're not already doing so. Uh, we've also already created y'all's class specific, so your Texas 25 class specific social media channels as well. If you want to start meeting with some of the rest of your classmates um, and those kinds of things, you can um, register um, and sign up for those class specific um, sessions. Here is also the Youth and Engagement Center's contact information. So if you do have further questions about the YEC, um, they have offices as well throughout the state. Uh, so here in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, Houston, San Antonio, Austin, and Dallas um, as well for those. Um, I do see that there are some questions uh, that popped up in the chat. So if that's okay, Gabby, I'll go ahead and answer those if y'all mind. Cool. Um, and so how do I check what date I submitted my FAFSA? Um, that would be on uh, the Department of Education's website where you'd be able to go to. Um, we wouldn't have a date on our cash page. Uh, it would be specifically um, on the Department of Education's website. Uh, the next question is what happens if we don't sign our housing contract within the 10 days? Uh, because if you do, does that not bind you to campus or can you still change your mind? Um, and that is a great question um, because it is true housing contract is a contract. So our Department of uh, Housing um, strongly recommends that if you're not 100% sure that you want to live on campus for this upcoming year, that you let your contract expire, and then you can contact them directly once you've made that decision um, and ask them to reinstate that. Um, it would be to their discretion at that point, and it may be automatically, um, or it may be um, when their next contract release uh, gets sent out and those kinds of things, uh, but it's definitely possible to get your contract reinstated. You would just have to contact housing directly. Um, because there are cancellation fees if you were to not go to UT but sign the housing contract, or if, even if you do go to UT um, but choose to live off campus and those kinds of things. So only sign your housing contract um, if you know 100% that you want to live on campus. Um, next question, is it true that UT is considering lowering the cost of living on campus for this upcoming semester? Um, that I can't give you a 100% confident answer just because I don't work for University Housing and Dining. Um, they haven't released the prices for the 21-22 academic year. Uh, that typically will get released in the summer. Um, and so that's when you'll be able to find out uh, fully to get a kind of a good idea of what the prices are now. You can go onto their website on housing.utex.edu and uh, click on price and billing and see what that price is uh, for this upcoming year. All right, I think that's all the questions uh, that I see in the chat. So if y'all do have any more in the future, like I said, I'd be happy to stick around um, or um, if y'all wanna email those, um, you may as well. Great questions, great session. Great. Thank you, Mr. Moya, for sharing those updates. Uh, anybody have any last minute questions before we move on? Great, Gabby? Any questions, no? Okay. <laughs> um, so I just wanna thank you all for joining us today. Um, I just wanna let you know that our next um, session is gonna be Tuesday, March 23rd at 4.30, um, and it's gonna be with the Global Leadership and Social Impact Program. Um, so if y'all have not registered for that, there's still time to register. Um, you can register for all the events. Uh, we do encourage that, as much information as possible, right? Um, and if you do have any questions or any concerns, um, just feel free to contact any of our centers. Um, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, we did provide our email. Um, and thank you all so much again for coming and have a great evening.
Thank you, guys. Good seeing everybody. Take care. Have a great evening.